Hello everyone, I am Hita. And I am Ishita. And we are Team Leo. This is the final presentation of our data analytics project, which is horse racing data analysis and the prediction of odds. Today's lineup is an introduction followed by our exploratory data analysis, clustering, pre-processing and the different modeling techniques we implemented and their inference. So we have included a video. Please do check out this video as it shows a real life horse race. It will be included in the presentation. So America's most prestigious and oldest horse races are held annually at Aqueduct, Belmont and Saratoga. Trackers, a real-time tracking chip, is fastened on the saddle of the horse and stores the geographical coordinates every 0.25 seconds. Here are some commonly used terms in the racing world. Purse, it refers to the total amount of money paid out to the owners of the horses racing at a particular track. Drafting strategy refers to moving close behind another competitor to reduce the work required to overcome drag. Maiden races include include races in which horses that have never won. Horses remain maiden until they notch their first win. Stakes are the most prestigious races and naturally they pay the highest purse. Allowance races include weights fastened on the horses so as to keep the competition fair. In claiming races, horses are sold at races because bids are placed on them prior to the event. Odds are the chances of a horse winning a particular race. Jockey refers to the person who rides the race and we have different race course types and track conditions that Ishita will explain. So this slide showcases three plots for course type, track condition and race type. So there are four different types of courses, dirt, turf, turf as in grass, inner turf, which is the turf alongside the inner boundary of the racing track, outer turf which is alongside the outer boundary of the racing track you have different track conditions too like fast track in which the horses can race with speed sloppy in which basically contains moisture muddy as in a muddy track and good which is an ideal horse racing track the three main types of racing tracks are racing types are claiming maiden and stakes as Hita explained, claiming is the one in which you, the horses are sold and maiden are the races in which horses which have never won run and stakes are the most prestigious horse racing types. So from these plots, we can notice that the most common type of races are held in the dirt course type and along the fast track condition and in a claiming race type. These three scatter plots are of the racing track at three different locations, Aqueduct, Belmont and Saratoga. As you can see, the run, the run up distance for Aqueduct is maximum compared to Belmont and Saratoga. So this is a scatter plot of the trajectory followed by the winner and the runner up horse at the finish line. The winner horse overtook the initially leading horse depicted in peach by moving slightly to the outside of the track and overtaking this, the initially leading horse from the outside. The second is a scatter plot, which is a close up of the first horse overtaking the second in the final moments of the race. So the performance of a horse in a race is largely depending on the pacing strategy as well as the skill of the jockey and its final decision taking moments with respect to drafting. This is a correlation heat map of the relevant features. We have noticed that there isn't large or uh, discernible correlation amongst the attributes except for two. One is the course type with the run-up distance which makes sense because you might have muddy or sloppy course types in which a horse might have to run up a longer distance than another one. We also have race type correlated with purse which intuitively makes sense again because the most prestigious kind of races have a larger purse whereas maiden type of races don't have that much. We, we next perform clustering, unsupervised clustering, wherein we use k-means clustering to cluster the data points based on the similarity of the races. 
and via k means clustering we got an elbow plot an optimum value of k equal to 6 but as you can see that the plot is a bit oscillating until k equal to 5 clusters hence we resorted to agglomerative clustering in agglomerative clustering we treat each point as an independent cluster and then combine two clusters based on their similarity so as you can see we got a nice elbow plot for agglomerative clustering at an optimum value of k equal to 6 hence we proceeded with this at the down right side you can see a 3d overview of the clusters that are formed using agglomerative clustering with respect to race type and program number and odds Next up, we performed pre-processing. So this is the data set before pre-processing. And the next slide contains data set after pre-processing. So we removed unnecessary columns such as race ID, tracker index, latitude, longitude, and distance ID, which could not offer us much information apart from the horse's geographic location. And we also removed duplicate rows. Next, we performed scaling and standardization. We used min-max scalar for categorical data and standard scalar for continuous data to standardize the impact of each feature on the target variable, which is odds. Next up, we performed principal component analysis, which is a dimensionality reduction method. It transforms a large set of variables into a smaller set while still holding most of the relevant information. So, we reduced our feature set from 12 attributes to 5 and these 5 features were the most important or the most contributing ones because they explain 90% of the variance in the data. Post this, we observed that we had a number of features that were independent because they weren't correlated to each other and they resulted in a dependent variable which was the odds, the chances of a horse winning. This is why we implemented multiple linear regression. The scatter plot on the right is a scatter plot of the logarithms, log logarithmic predicted values versus the logarithmic true values. This is the only uh, uh, linear, re linear relationship that we could observe. We had an RMSE value of 0.59 and MAE value of 0.55. To validate this model, we performed fivefold cross validation and we saw that there was very less standard deviation which confirmed that the performance of the model isn't fluctuating with the varying data with the varying test sets and we also have a plot of the r squared values with the number of features this stabilizes at around 5 which shows that 5 features were sufficient enough for the maximized r squared value and this validates the principal component analysis because we chose 5 features to gain a better r square value and hence a better accuracy, we explored the deep neural network model. So our deep neural network model was formed based on the following specifications of 200 epochs and batch size equal to 200 and a learning rate of 0 0.001. We used the Adam optimizer, which was used to iteratively tune the network weights based on the training data. And this was done to minimize the loss function. We used five different layers, one input, two dropout layers, one hidden layer containing 15 nodes and one output layer containing one node for the odds. We also used activation functions such as linear and relu to account for the non-linearity in our data set. The right hand side plots show an improvement or rather a reduction in the loss, RMSE and MAE values of about 0.02 compared to the MLR model. So the following is a flow of the entire process of this project. We started off with EDA, went on to unsupervised learning, performed pre-processing, principal component analysis, on to modeling, multiple linear regression, applied 5-4 cross-validation to validate this model, a deep neural, neural network, which performed marginally better than the previous uh, MLR, and how we inferred it. Thank you. Thank you.